All right. Let's see. Let's see. Welcome to, um, I guess, Reb, Reb Talk, whatever. Former Rebs talking about what's going on this season and what's going on with them and their life. I'm Stephen Willis. I'm here tonight with Marche Green, famous for that pick six in the Cotton Bowl, I guess in early 2009. <laughs> it was 2008 season. Also, I have a few questions about the Mississippi State game and Ed Orgeron's last game and what went on then. So I'm looking forward to having some conversations with Marche. As you know, me and um, him were at Ole Miss at about the same time, so we got a little bit of a little bit of history. Um, but he's nice enough to stop by and say, "Hey, how you doing, Marche?" Great, man. Fine, man. I'm doing great, man. Just taking it day by day, man. Hey, that's all you can do. That's absolutely all you can do. Hey, before we get started, what's it like to play football in Canada? I know you were in the CFL and you did all that. How, how was that? How's that a little bit different? Playing ball in Canada was the best part of my professional career. Okay, definitely. Um, it kind of reminded me like college ball. Like fans are crazy, um, very supportive, and it's not so much politics in it. You know? Yeah. So. Playing ball in Canada was the best part of my professional career. Yeah. Now, um, did you have any adjustments that you need to make with the three downs and the 12 people um, on the field at the same time, the larger field? I mean, what, what was that like? Actually, the only adjustment was like, you know, I had to just really work on my technique because the field is bigger and longer, right? Mm -hmm. And so the technique probably made me hone in on my technique. But it's still ball, man, at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And what was your team up there? Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Okay. Was that um, Ken Alston? Or did he go back up no, there no. after the fact? Yeah, but Kent was there, I think he was there two years prior. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that, um, this is another thing, is that where German Bellow is? I'm not sure, man. Okay. Yeah, I know he's I'm doing. Sure. I'm about to keep up with it now. Yeah, he's doing TV up there with somebody, and I think he's up there in Regina, um, doing that with Saskatchewan. Okay, great then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now we just talked about Canada and everything. Let's talk a little bit about your time at Ole Miss and the game in 2007, Ed Orgeron's last game as coach. Yeah. But that is famous. That is famous because you and Dexter McCluster were like twin slots, and y'all were alternating in the backfield and in the slot. And that was rumored to be a game that Hugh Freeze was basically calling the offense. What what was what was that game like? And what do you remember? I don't remember much. I just remember it being a bad day for Ole Miss. Oh yeah, like a bad day for the players. A bad day for the staff. Man, we lost Mississippi State. Yeah, and so you know the season didn't even go well. So look, man, it was a bad day, man. So yeah. that's all that I really remember from that day. Tell you the truth. Yeah, the year before you housed a punt in that very same game, if I remember correctly. Um, I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I enjoyed you as a punt returner. You had a little bit of wiggle. You were kind of a phone booth player, and you were just yeah. fun to watch. You were just fun to watch on a punt returner. You know, now I think. Everyone since Hugh Freeze was there, moving forward to now, basically punt return has just become a fair catch thing for the Ole Miss punt returners, and you just don't see that type of wiggle that yeah, I mean you had and um, others before you. Definitely, man. Well, I'm positive that the guys there are stronger than me, faster than me, taller than me. Mm -hmm. But it's all about a mentality at the end of the day. It's all about believing a hundred percent every time you back there catching those punts. I'm going to score a touchdown every time. I'm going to score a touchdown every single time. Not ninety nine percent, but a hundred percent every single time. Because it's one of the most important positions and times during the game. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and I I know you're from North Louisiana up in Bastrop. Um, but if you do you have any family down around the New Orleans South Louisiana area? No. No, okay, so everybody's good to go then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, now, going back to that pick six in the Cotton Bowl, I think you were covering Michael Crabtree. They tried to hit him on an out. 
you undercut it and you were off to the house. Talk about talk about that a little bit before we move on to this year. I think it was third down, maybe, and I think he was running the dig route. Hmm. And I think he stumbled and he fell down. And like, you know, I saw the ball coming, so you know, I just snatched it out of the air. Like I said, I took it to the house. So yeah, man, that was exciting times. Man, one of my best plays. Yeah, like I said, I was um I was on about the forty five yard line, right underneath the press box, and that definitely got me off my feet. And that's when I, that was the point I knew. There's like, oh, Texas Tech's in for it today. It just doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> just yeah, doesn't matter. I came right back with the punt return, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, so do you watch uh, any Ole Miss football on the reg anymore? Yes. So, um, what do you think about the team this year, the expectations, Lane Kiffin, stuff, things like that? I think the program is headed in the right direction. I think Kiffin is the guy so far. Last year was 5-5. Five and five. This year, I'm expecting at least 8-3. and three. Okay. This year. Bowl game, I'm expecting – the team to show a lot of improvement. Um, I think he's returned 18 juniors, maybe. Yeah. Well, I think and so, 18 and super seniors, whatever, whatever they're calling right. it. Yeah. And so I think if he was, he have those, have that many guys coming back with the quarterback he have there, I think it gives Ole Miss a chance to really, really make some noise this year. Like, Top ten, top fifteen, yeah. Okay. Top ten, top towards the end of the year, yeah. Okay, if you had a quarterback like Matt Corral, um, when you were playing on offense, playing off in the slot, let's say two thousand and seven, um, when Brent Schaefer was there, or two thousand and six when Seth was calling the shots, what do you, do you think you would end up on the defensive side of the ball? What I know is this: is that. Coming out of high school, I had never played wide receiver, not one down. Really? Like, ever. Like, I never played the position, not one down. So, in high school, I played running back. So, seeing the game, seeing the field different, and knowing that the ball had to be thrown to me was a major adjustment. And so, I think I could have developed faster. And I think that if Brent Schaefer could have developed first, I think I, I think I would have been a better wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. and I, I really liked what y'all did. Go back to that 2007 state game. I was actually at that game as well. I was sitting over in the Ole Miss section, hurting like everybody else. <laughs> um, right. But that was a very unique offense before the tempo spread that would we would see six, seven years down the road came to fruition. It was like an early glimpse of what could have been. Right. Yeah. Definitely, man. Um, we was very talented, man. You know, with me, mm-hmm. Dexter, Shay Hodge, Mike Wallace, Kendrick Lewis, Michael Hicks. All of us was in the wide receiver room my freshman and sophomore year. So, man, man, we was talented, man. We had a lot of people there. Yeah, you yeah, absolutely was. And I think, um, no, you know, no, ba- not to bag on Brent or Seth, but if you guys had a major, y'all, all y'all were lacking was the QB one know, behind right? center. That 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 was all you're lacking because Seth, God bless him, he he had all that want to in the world. He just, you know, he transferred from Delta State for a reason, but he did a heck of a job. Yeah, um, I know. yeah, yeah I know. he gave it his all, man. Yeah, he gave it he gave it his all, and you had Mike Wallace on the outside that nobody can run with. I don't think anybody in the league in the last twenty years could run with Mike Wallace. Period. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it, it, what could have been with those few years? And we talk about. Did you watch the Nebraska Illinois game this weekend? See, did it. Did, Nebraska looked terrible, just awful. <laughs> and, and and what it reminded me a lot of Ed Orgeron at Ole Miss. And to where the want to, he wanted to win so bad that he was just going to strangle and overly work and just do unnecessary things. It was all the stuff that Ed did at Ole Miss, and you could just see it happen on the field. It's like, I've seen this movie before. Definitely, man. You know, my freshman and sophomore year, 
we really learn how to work and like really get after it. Mm -hmm. And all that came from Coach Ogier. Yeah, you couldn't help it. He was he was going to. Uh, I'll just put it like this: He did not believe in um, work smarter, not harder. He believed in work harder and work harder and work harder. That, that's all he could he do. That's all grind. he knew. Yeah, it, it and definitely, man, it was a grind, man. I remember um, one time actually in the team room, and um, everybody did all their ripped their shirts off and they um, did a dog <laughs> pile, yeah, and. I in the middle of the dog pile, uh, Coach O, like me and Biff, uh, we had our shirts still on and we were back in the corner because it's like, what is going on? And he just stopped the dog pile <laughs> in the middle to yell at me and Biff for not participating in the dog pile. And it, just craziness happening, man. Just crazy. Pre hey, pre-game Coach O was something else, wasn't he? I was, -game ne -game I was, was, I was else. never in the locker room for pre-game. Um, because oh, I was I, I was outside setting up for video, so I never got to see that moment. But I can only imagine it was just great. Definitely, man, it was amazing. Yeah, it, it was a sight to see for sure. The funny thing is, though, uh, people don't know everything. Like the Hugh Freeze thing that he did with Alabama, where he'd say "lock the gates" and "don't let them out." And it's like he stole all that from Coach O. Yes, these are all Coach O sayings. Like, oh he, you know, like he did for you, but all this stuff you could hear him talking about it is like oh, Coach O did that 10 years ago. Come on, hey man, it works today, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so offensively, what do you think about the offensive system that we run right now? The tempo and the stuff that they do, I think it fits today's game, mm -hmm. you know. and most importantly, I know that Ole Miss have the athletes mm. to like really put up some points. And like, and like, I mean, man, now I think this is the best quarterback since Jevin Sneed stepped foot on Ole Miss campus. Ooh, better so Chad. Think, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Jevin and this quarterback is better than Chad Kelly. Yes. I, I think this is the best quarterback Ole Miss has had since Eli. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think he's a little Eli bit better than Jeff. Now, take him to a bowl game mm -hmm. or two, and, hey, definitely. Yeah, like he beat a, beat a top ten team in the Outback Bowl last year without Elijah, without Jerry and Ely, and without Braylon. Good grief. Uh -huh. Just That's none of dope. yeah, you know, just did it on his own, threw for like three seventy. So I'm very impressed with Matt Corral, and also I'm impressed with his maturity. Um, like in 2019, when he lost the job to John Rice Plumley, there were some immature issues during that season um, that he worked through and got past. And whenever he took 2020, he just became a new person. <clears throat> and if he makes a step similar to the one he made last year to this year, this could be the best season ever by an Ole Miss quarterback. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. If if the team finished at least 8-3, and three, the guy has a chance to jump in the first round. Yes. I, th I think he's going to – the media has been setting, the, setting this up for a couple of months to where he's Zach Wilson. So I think as the end, his, his arc is going to be Zach Wilson in the end. And, okay. Yeah, and he'll end up going number two or number three to – whoever finishes in that thing. He's a good quarterback, um, great quarterback, but I, I think they downplayed him early so they could build him up late. I, I think that's what's happened. I'm not sure, but the guy looked pretty good, man. Yeah, so. he looked pretty good. <laughs> so, man, hopefully, man, you know, you pick up where he left off last year. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. And against Louisville, with everything that's going on, John Rice moving to slot. You played that position a little bit. Uh, okay. J.J. Henry, um, the young freshman out of Texas, who's more of a Jalen Waddle type slot player, and Jacor mm -hmm. Pearson, which is like a B minus Elijah Moore because he's a little guy. That's he's he's kind of kind of like you out there. Um, okay, I think between the three of them, they can recreate Elijah a little bit, um, but it'll be interesting to see. Hey man, that guy pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah, that know, that man. dude, that so, dude's a star. Like that guy's pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, if you if you can re if you can um take his production and divide it up between three different players, I think we have a shot. No one player can do what he did though. 
Um, and score some punt returns. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, <laughs> he needs to return the ball. Also, um, did, did you watch the Outback Bowl last year? Uh, I watched part of it, but not all of it. Dontario, it just freaked me out. Dontario went back there returning punts. He was returning everything. He didn't care. I loved it. Really? He just didn't care. Yeah, just everything. If you go back and look at it, he's it's actually on my YouTube profile. I have it on demand, and you can see all those punt returns on there. And he just catches the ball and go. It, it's something to see. Look, man, if if the team could get at least two to three punt returns, that's at least a game or two. Yeah, it's it's hit, it's hidden yardage. Win. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's at least a game so in the win column. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other thing is, we need to be better in the kicking game. We need and when we get to the thirty yard lines, it needs to be three points, and it hasn't right. been three points for the last few years. And that that could be a game or two. But that that's the difference between us going ten and two this year and us going seven and five. That'd be that difference. Hey man, eight and three. Mm-hmm. I think the team has a lot of potential. You now it's just all about putting it out there on the field and just finishing, man, strong, man, this year, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward. Anyway, um, we're gonna um close the interview right there. I do want to thank you, Marche, for coming on board. And this this interview will air for everybody on Sunday. This will be kind of part of the pregame weekend of everybody. So appreciate you coming by, and hope we can do this again. Definitely, but I 